The spotted flycatcher breeds in most of Europe and Western Asia and is migratory, wintering in Africa and southwestern Asia. These two have chosen a location in a clump of honeysuckle, immediately under a security light in the yard at our dog rehab centre. In woodland, the species normally favours old trees, or locations under dense climbers. In gardens, they usually prefer old mature climbers, or wall shrubs growing against the wall of a house. Their nest is usually only partially concealed, allowing the birds a good open view. In this respect, this nest is fairly typical, other than the fact that its location is quite exposed, with people and dogs coming and going throughout the day. Fortunately, the spotted flycatcher is very tolerant of humans. Both birds build the nest, which is usually against a tree trunk. The nest is a cup made of grass, thin twigs, lichen and spider's webs, and lined with feathers and hair. 
Nicky Oliver first noticed the two birds flying to and from the nest in mid-June. There was a cluster of four eggs present when she investigated. We didn't want to disturb the birds during the incubation period of 11 to 14 days, so we kept quiet about the nest and tried to avoid intruding on them. Once we were sure that they were tolerating our presence, we set up the cameras at a respectful distance to record their activities. By this time their reddish blotched, glossy white eggs had hatched and they were busy feeding the young chicks. Spotted flycatchers mainly eat flying insects, including moths, butterflies, damselflies and craneflies. However, if the weather is bad, they can search trees and shrubs for other insect food. Although only the mother will incubate the eggs, both parents share the responsibility of feeding the young. These birds are protective parents and will boldly defend the nests even from birds as large as jays. The parents keep the nest very clean, picking up the little sacks of waste which the young deposit. Spotted flycatchers spend the winter in Africa and are amongst the last of the summer migrant species to arrive in the UK. Although the first arrivals can be found in mid-April, it is not until mid-May that the majority of birds appear. The species has been in gradual decline since the 1960s. Between the years 1980 and 2005, the population of spotted flycatchers in the UK fell by 79%. The current population in Britain is thought to be around 59,000 during the summer. The species is now on the red list of birds of conservation concern and is listed as a Biodiversity Action Plan priority species. Many spotted flycatchers nest in large trees and there has been a large scale loss of those woodlands, parks and hedgerows which are their favourite habitats, especially following Dutch elm disease. There is a growing evidence that a range of birds found on lowland farms are affected by a lack of insects to eat during the summer. The onset of the birds' breeding season is kick-started by the length of daylight hours, whereas insects' life cycles are temperature dependent. Because of climate change, insects may now have life cycles which do not coincide with the birds' breeding season. Spotted flycatchers hunt from conspicuous perches. Hunting usually involves sitting still for long periods, until the sight of a flying insect causes the flycatcher to leap out and catch the insect with an audible snap of its bill, often returning to the same perch. This upright posture is characteristic of their hunting position. During flycatching sessions, the birds may hover in front of a bush or climb to a height of more than 60 feet to spot their prey. In rainy periods, when fewer insects are flying, the birds switch to ground feeding. They are however less successful in catching prey there and tend to suffer in prolonged bad weather. Spotted flycatchers have been observed feeding after dark on insects attracted to street lamps and lighted windows. This may explain why they have chosen to nest under a light we leave on all night, which has the advantage of attracting some food towards the nest and saving them having to go out and find it themselves. While most species of flycatcher are thought to be monogamous, studies of the pied flycatcher have shown that it is actually polygamous with some males defending more than one territory and attracting a female to each. They do not, however, help the second female to raise her young, and she is consequently much less successful in her nest. It is not known how prevalent this deception is, but it is likely that many species thought monogamous do indulge in such relationships.
most European birds cannot discriminate between their own eggs and those of other species. The exception to this are the hosts of the common cuckoo, which have had to evolve this skill as a protection against that nest parasite. Spotted flycatchers show excellent egg recognition, and it is likely that they were once a host of the cuckoo, but became so good at recognising the intruder's eggs that they ceased to be victimised by them. Over the few days we were filming them, we noticed that only one bird seemed to sit on the nest, although both were busy catching food. This one, we suspect, is the female. She will stay on the nest until she hears the male approaching, or sees him perching in the trees opposite. Then she will make way for him to come in and feed the chicks. Once he has delivered his beakful, he doesn't usually hang around, and makes off immediately to catch more insects. During this time she has usually caught a few herself, and returns to the nest with another feed, before settling back down to keep the chicks warm. The one we think is the male goes back to the bird table and makes several sallies to catch more insects. But today seems like a bad day. It's not for want of trying. Better luck tomorrow. It's a few days later and food has obviously been in abundance because the chicks have grown rapidly and are now filling the nest. Mum and Dad are constantly flying in more provisions and have to take the occasional break just to get their wind back. While all of this intense activity is going on, there are plenty of other things happening in the centre, observed by some at a safe distance. New vantage points have been found under the lime tree, and the pair quarrel over prime position on top of the post. Nicky and some of the dogs go for a walk in the paddock, but there are so many insects in the air that our flycatchers are too busy to take any notice. There is no room for mum in the nest anymore, and it looks like it will only be a few days before there is no room for the chicks either. The young birds are very aware of the potential threats outside the safety of their nest. When Val leaves the house and walks past the nest to go to the dog's room, they all go quiet and huddle down for protection.
Over the next few days, mum and dad are kept constantly busy, bringing insects to the ever-growing chicks, whose appetites match the speed of their growth. We see mum and dad all over the site, too busy to fight or quarrel over the best places to catch insects. But they're not worried anyway, because there is no shortage. Then, on the morning of the 20th of July, the nest is empty and the birds have flown. All four chicks are heard in the trees of the orchard, and we get the occasional glimpse of them, but they never stay long enough to focus the camera. We know that they are there because mum and dad are still frantically gathering insects, and flying off into the trees to deposit them in open beaks. But this is the last we think we will see of the chicks this year. The little grey-brown birds often come back year after year to nest in the same place and in some cases the nest is repaired and reused again and again. Hopefully mum and dad or maybe some of the chicks will come back again next year. The nest is vacant and waiting. A small bird with a wingspan of around 14 centimetres and a typical lifespan of two years. Their breeding cycle starts in May and they will lay one or two clutches of four to five eggs each season. The eggs take 11 to 14 days to incubate and the young chicks fledge after 12 to 14 days. From laying to fledging, there was only one month to see what we have seen, so keep your eyes open.